Hey everybody, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We are now ready for the Grand Archive value pack or evaluation of box value. It's going to be very interesting what you're going to see, I think. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about it at the end. So as you guys know, I like to go through, open up a bunch of boxes of any kind of product or card game that I like or even don't like sometimes and give you guys an evaluation of what that product is. What the box values are according to TCG Player. Um, is it worth it to open? Is it better to buy singles? Well, it's always better to buy singles, but sometimes when you get into a new game, you get you need you need commons and stuff too, so why not buy boxes, right? But before we get started, don't forget. Comment, like, subscribe. There's a little subscription button over here. Helps keep you up to date on all this stuff we're gonna do when we got Woe coming up, if not already started. So Here's the breakdown. So I have my ultra rares, super rares, my foils, and the special cards. Um, I didn't count rares, commons, or uncommons. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, most of the rares in this set are less than a dollar. Normally, I would bulk out all rares, average a dollar, uh, if it's below two. Instead, what I did was anything below a dollar, uh, I bulked out at 50 cents. Um, so basically every two rares was a dollar uh, and as you guys know the way the boxes are set up you will get uh, roughly seven rares per box or I'm sorry 14 rares per box uh, which is about seven dollars uh, and then the rest will be super rares and a unique um, or I'm sorry unique ultra rare so that's kind of how we played it out so I'm not going to show you the rares I'm just going to show you everything else um, first off, let's go about the ultra rares. So as you can see, we did a pretty good job of getting multiple ultra rares. Um, most of these ultra rares are stuff you only need one of. So, um, except for this ally here, um, it's all regalia stuff. You only need one. Um, my only problem with that is... It's great that you only need one ultra rare, but when you get multiples and open open extra boxes, it's a feel bad to not get the ultra rare that you want. Now, with that being said, as we talked about in the videos, the ultra rares are like four to five bucks. So honestly, I don't even think it matters. But if you're gonna get an ultra rare in a box, I think it'd be worth more. But at the end of, at the end of the day, the chase cards are where the real value is. So let's not go down that road necessarily. So. We got our 18 ultra rares. Uh, I did get one of everything, so I'm happy with that, at least to the best of my knowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I got one of everything. Um, all right, so there's that. Now, next we'll move on to super rares. Uh, we got a pretty good stack, roughly five to six per box. Uh, and we got a good chunk of every super rare. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, I know Merlin was one of the ones I was a little upset about because it was hard for me to get. Where'd she go? Did I? Oh, Merlin's on a different thing. Never mind. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so you can see there's plenty of every super rare. Amazingly, I only got three of these. Like, the colored ones were harder to get than the people. And maybe it's supposed to be that way. I don't know. But as you can see, you know, three and four of every color. Uh, the magistrate or the ma majesty here, plenty of. There's Merlin. Only got four. Uh, plenty of Uther, Jesus. Uh, plenty of crawl. So, very interesting there. Then we have the sweetness. The cool texture card reprints. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a Grail, which is like the thousand dollar hit, but we did get. A sweet Morgan soul guide. Oh my. So that was fantastic. And then we did get some of these cards. We got a couple good ones. Uh, we got the swords. And we did get the assassin ripper. Uh, these other ones aren't going for as much. Only like 10, 15 bucks. These are up in the 40s. Um, and we got six of those. Plus the collector series card. In 18 boxes. So yeah. Foils. We averaged about three foils per box. Some boxes less. Uh, one or two boxes had more. Uh, but we got a pretty good slew of different foils. Some repeats. Some real sweet super rares. 
uh, some real sweet rares, uh, like that, for example. Um, but yeah, so we did get plenty of foils. Uh, I would expect, I would expect about three per box if you're going to open these. Uh, but that's not a guarantee. I mean, there are some boxes that had two. So you got to be careful. Now, with all that said, what does that mean? Well, let's get these out of the way here. Because what I'm going to do next, I'm going to bring out what you love and what I love. The handy dandy notebook. Because heaven forbid I do this electronically because that'd be way too easy. So, as you can see here, um, I did every box individually and all 18 boxes are on here. There's lots of circles, but let me just give you the basic rundown. So this circle over here was for this box. So we had a $52 box, a 733 box. Guess what was in that box? Yeah, that was the collector series to pull. 46, 48, 59, 107 was the last box. That was pretty good. A 66, a 44, a 40, 54, 57, a 79, 36, 54, 54, 49, a 93, and a 38. So you can see there's a lot of good boxes, a lot of bad boxes. Uh, if you're looking at averages of above the $71 mark or even the, I think some of them are selling for 60 right now, there's only one, two, three, four, five boxes out of this 18 box case that was above 60. Uh, so if we average it out, what does it look like? Well, if you average it out, total value for all the boxes, as I described, not counting commons, uncommons, this includes foils because foils are premiums, $1,026 for a case. So, and that's about what they're going for, minus a hundred bucks or so. Um, online right now, so that's about on par. But your average box value is 57 bucks, and this does include the collector series. So if you're buying, and I'm, let me stress this very much so, if you buy these boxes loose, odds are someone's going to crack 18 boxes. And as you saw in this video, the fourth box I opened had a collector series in it. So it'd be very easy for me to sell the other uh, 14 boxes for 60 bucks a box. And actually have a higher average return than actually opening those boxes. So be careful buying loose boxes. Because once they pull the collector series card out of the box, or the case, they know pretty well that the rest of the boxes will not have one. Now I know they, they're saying there's a chance there'll be two inside the case. We didn't see it here. So I doubt we'll see it somewhere else unless someone gets really lucky. Now there are other chase cards like these that will be in there. But even with these, some of the boxes that had these in there did not meet the $60 criteria. So even though there are chase cards in there, it doesn't mean that they're going to help you. So please keep that in mind. Now, with that said, if you look down here, you'll notice that we had six of these chase card styles inside the box. So there were six of them, 18 boxes. Every three boxes, you're probably going to pull one of these. And one of these is running anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks, 60 if you get real lucky. Um, and that price may go down a little bit as they hit, start hitting the market. So every three boxes you get those. Collector Series, one out of every 18. So if you really want a Collector Series card, there's honestly no difference from paying full price for it or just buying a case. And with that being said, I got Morgan, who's a little more expensive. Some of the Collector Series cards are cheaper than Morgan, which means it's definitely more um, wallet-friendly to just flat-out buy that card and just be done with it. So keep that in mind as well. So at the end of the day, what are my thoughts? Um, I think it's a good set. Uh, it's fun. Uh, it's good to open. It, for me, and maybe this is I'm spoiled because of Magic and other card games, I don't like mini sets um, just because I know they said that everybody would be easy for everybody to get the cards. Uh, so the, the, the plus side is I have all the cards I need to play. That's, that's not a problem. The downside is it takes away collectability from not only the value of the card, but the ability to trade with someone. Because unless, I mean, I mean yeah, you're saying, but Clyde, you bought a whole case for like $1,000 plus. Not everybody's going to do that. True. But if you buy, I think, four or five boxes of this, you're going to have every card you need and not need to trade. And I think 
that's part of losing collectability too because the, the set's so small there's not going to be a lot of trading because everybody's just going to have what they want. Um, and if there is trading, there's not going to be a real point to it because the cards won't have any real value um, and people probably just give them away. So half a dozen one six the other. Take it what you will. Um, at the end of the day, though, I still like the set. I like that there's chase cards and some cool stuff you can get. Um, and if this set does pick, not this set, the game picks up a lot more steam. I think these cards are actually undervalued for what they are. Uh, but again, it's supply and demand and how many people play. So half a dozen one six the other. Um, at the end of the day, there you have it. Tell me what you think down below. Um, this is my review of the Grand Archive Fractured Crown. So, back to magic. Until next time, be kind. Hope to see you across from the game table. Later, player.